it. So we're we're here with Daniel, yeah, who's um, we've decided now to employ our own psychotherapist. And Daniel here is, is, uh, has been with us this afternoon as he's been analysing the situation, um, and he has some questions for us, Daniel. So, if the security guards do take a rap for it, then would this actually be worth it? That's a great question. Will you just film that? It's got little red buttons in the corner. Um, your question is a good question, and I noticed that it brings up the, um, the desire to defend myself immediately. So what I'm going to do, and you don't have to film all this, is just to think about it, or meditate on it for a minute. So I'm going to meditate on it. Um, respond to you. Just whilst you're meditating on it, I must comment that I do find it boring waiting for people to meditate. That would that would certainly help yeah. my boredom. Our desire is not to get any security guard into trouble, but also any opportunity for a person to see themselves in a way that they don't generally ever see themselves. And I don't think they've they very often have to deal with people like this. I think it's always therapeutic and also cathartic for them to see themselves in a situation which is very out of the ordinary because it stops the autopilot and it means that they have to do decisions on the spot. So if anyone got fired over this, I would feel sad, but there's also a lot of things people can do within the matrix as opposed to catching shoplifters. Well, it's um, reassuring um, to know that you would feel sad, um, but, the, but you're espousing that there would be um, a silver lining to oh, that. Yeah. For example, if we went to an armed fair, an arms fair like for the army, and one of the army guys ended up getting so stressed out and he punched me or attacked Danny and uh, lost his job. What would that say about him? What would that say about the army? What would that say about his desire to lash out when when if he was comfortable with what his job, comfortable with what he was doing, comfortable with his own self, would he feel the need to lash out? And to that security guard in there who kicked me, why did he kick me? It was because he was taken out of his um, his um, circle of comfort and forced to do something else. So I feel sad, but in a way, in a way, it, uh, I've lost my train of thought. It's all right. It can be very intimidating talking to me sometimes. <laughs> um, firstly, to be honest, I really very much doubt that anybody is going to even be told off for that, never mind lose their jobs. I really doubt anyone's going to lose their job because we did that. Because frankly, what on earth are they meant to do? Even the management didn't come out to touch us because they knew that there's nothing they could do. So that's the first thing. I mean, there's always all sorts of possibilities of outcomes that can happen when we challenge the status quo. Um, it's certainly not my desire to cause any upset and to cause anyone to lose their jobs. And at the same time, it's, you know, all sorts of things can happen. I don't know, I think we caught it at the end, is I, I do, in most cases, go back after the event and try and clean up anything that needs to be cleaned up with security guards, whoever's involved. Um, and I did that here, that, that here with the people that were hanging around and I think we ended off uh, you know, with a good rapport and in a positive space. Um, and at the same time, you know, what? obviously if someone lost their job because of this, that would be a very undesirable outcome. But, you know, to, to, to suggest that two guys going in with a megaphone in a shopping centre, um, speaking about a lot of beautiful and interesting subjects, trying to break through the the trance state that has been caused by the corporations that you know that if there might be a small chance that somebody might lose their job which would be crazy you know to suggest that for me it doesn't really hold much water 
suddenly what came up for me was, um, at the end of it, was a sense of, well, phew, it sounds like the boys have really got it off their chest. And I'm just wondering to what extent this is about you needing to get things off your chest, as opposed to the actual contents of what you're saying. Meditate? I, I don't deny for one minute. I think you should meditate, Danny. And for a quick interlude, Charlie. It's impossible to separate the fact that there is the individual doing this. Um, it's impossible to do this without going in there and actually doing it. Does it feel good for me? It feels fantastic. I love doing this. So, of course, there's an element of doing this for my own enjoyment, and I wouldn't. There's no point being an activist if you're not having fun. And to me, having fun is doing the right thing. When you're doing the right thing, it feels fun automatically. And that's the difference between real fun and corporate controlled induced fun. Um, when you're having real fun doing what we do, we're not going to lash out at people. We're not going to attack people. But when you're having fake fun or when you're just following orders, like you think you're having fun in, in the army or in the police and then you eventually act violently, I think that says a lot more about the fun you thought you were having. So to answer your question in a roundabout way, of course there's an element of self-gratification for this and that's luckily uh, ties into hopefully good work like and I mean I say good work literally like work that is good a win-win situation yeah well Danny have you finished meditating yes I have <laughs> um, if you come a bit closer because the, the mic's, 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 right, right, yeah. mic's not good um, <laughs> not that close <laughs> You see, this question is something that I ponder on a lot. Um, I am very far from having resolved um, issues of my relationship with authority that got put in place when I was a child, my relationship with my father, my relationship with my mother, my relationship with my teachers. And I'm fully aware, maybe not at the time, but I'm fully aware now when I think about it, that when I go in there and do that, within seconds, that rela those relationships are actually triggered. and. What happens there is I do get lost and um, sometimes I'm doing projection or counter-transference as some psychologists might observe. And um, it's a question for me which I haven't resolved, which is, you know, do I spend the next 25 years in therapy until maybe I'll completely resolve all those issues and then come out and do what I do? Or do I do uh, what I do and at the same time do my very best? to become as aware as I can of how those um, old uh, experiences are being triggered and so do the best I can at uh, leaving them where they belong, which is in the past. I don't deny that what was going on in there um, was not completely clean at all, or was not at all clean of, of my own personal stuff. Um, and at the same time, I feel it was, I, I feel that these things are exciting they are I think they're powerful they touch a lot of people they touch a lot of people who watch the videos people who sit around who know inside I think what, what our videos are about are that we so many of us know inside that this this world that we've created the Western world civilization there's something very strange about it something fake about it something very controlled about it and when they see somebody trying to break through that I think a lot of people are very deeply touched and yes my stuff is there and we're, we've all got stuff or certainly I have got mountains of stuff to deal with 